Hi, my name is Jorge Torres. I'm the CEO at MindZB, and I'm here to talk to you about database artificial intelligence and the fantastic work that we've been doing with MariaDB ever since we started with this idea and all the advancements that we've made so far that hopefully you will find super interesting and useful for your projects, your ideas, and to make better decisions, which jumps into the fundamental question that we ask ourselves, why database artificial intelligence? As you know, databases are fantastic decision-making tools, and it makes sense to power them with machine learning capabilities of today so that those users, those database users can actually leverage that power to make even better decisions. Database artificial intelligence is to augment the databases with AI capabilities. And we start with the machine learning capabilities. MyZB is the leading DBI platform today. And we are actually super excited to show you all the things we've done to tackle very interesting problems that you already have or that you probably have when you try to forecast from information that you have in your database. MyZB plus MariaDB provides this abstraction for the machine life cycle. Essentially, it allows you to do all the steps of machine learning all within SQL, the data preparation, the machine learning model, and the model deployment. Of course, the data preparation is something that you can already do with MariaDB because databases are inherently the most powerful tools to do data preparation. The concept that we introduce here is a concept called AI tables. Now, the best way for me to actually introduce you to this concept is to give you an example. Imagine that you have a simple table that has income and debt. If you were to visualize this table, you will see what you have on the left hand or the right hand side of this image. And every single row that you have in that table represents a dot. Databases are designed to give you responses to statements that match a record that you have in your database. However, they're not designed to give you approximations. So if you query for something like, what is the actual income for, um, or what will be the debt for an income of 90,000, you're going to get no results. Anyone that has done machinery modeling understands that you can build a hybrid plane that fits that data. And the idea that we have is, well, it'd be very interesting if we could create that model or fit that line the same way that we actually, or with a syntax that is very similar to that that we use to create a view. In this case, you can tell it, you want to create a predictor, you want to name this predictor debt model, and you want to train this predictor from the table income table. And you actually want to learn how to forecast the column debt. Of course, this is a simple approximation of what you can do with MyZB if, your table is more complex if the type of information you want to forecast is also more complex and the number of columns that you have might be can handle this as well as if you know what you're doing in machine learning, you can specify what type of model you want to use, how you want to mix the data, how you want to encode it. But by default, MyZB uses super powerful AutoML capabilities so you don't have to if you don't want to or if you don't know how to. Now, once you've trained a model, and you can actually query this model the same way that you query a table. You can select, in this case, income debt and the predicted value from the model that you want to have, where the income in this case is 90,120, and you get a, an approximation for this. You actually run the model with the input that you had on the word statements. This, of course, can be extended to much more complicated problems, and we'll jump into one of those. But the interesting thing here is that if you actually use AI tables for your machine learning capabilities, then you've accomplished to do all of the machine learning life cycle in SQL. Of course, if your data is in the database, you've figured out how to do the data acquisition. You've already figured out how to do the data cleaning and the labeling of your data because MariaDB, of course, having a schema forces you to make sure that your data somehow is clean. And then, of course, after every single query, what you have is columns, and those columns are features. Then MyZB can take care of the modeling with that statement that allows you to create models the same way that you create a view, or in a similar way that you create a view, 
it can handle the model selection, the hyperparameter optimization, the ensembling, the model validation with its AutoML capabilities, but you can also specify that through the same simple syntax that we abstract for you. Now, the cool thing here is that in databases, the concept of deployment is very instantaneous. As soon as you do create table, create view, those objects are living things within the database. And therefore, the same thing happens when you do create a model or create a predictor. That model is real for you to query as soon as the training is done. You don't have to think of any deployment. And the only things that you have to care about are the same things that you care about when your data is actually changing. If the schema changes, you may want to create a new model. If your data distribution changes, you may actually want to update the model. Now, as we start doing this with databases, we start to realize that databases come with very specific problems that are hard even for very sophisticated machine learning practitioners. Where what you want to forecast is not actually a problem of taking into account just one single row. In this case, let's imagine that you want to forecast inventory from your database. The information that you need to actually forecast this is contained in a history of the inventory units that you have over time. And therefore, the information that the model needs to train, it's not actually contained in one single row, but in multiple rows. This falls within the category of time series. And the interesting thing is that in databases, they get a little bit more complicated than that. You usually don't have just one single column. It's just one want to fork inventory, but you also want to take into account a column, which is the price of the inventory at the given time, which is a usual thing that you find in databases. This turns these models not only into time series models, but also multivariate time series, which brings the barrier a little bit higher for those that want to build this on their own. Now, the interesting thing here as well is that these problems have a problem of cardinality usually as well. That is that your data is partitioned by, in this case, say a product ID. What this means is you could have in one single table, thousands, hundreds, or hundreds of thousands of individual time series that are partitioned by the product ID. You will have as many time series as products you have essentially. And this makes it so, so that if you're going down the traditional routes, you may actually be inclined to train a model for each partition which tends to be not viable when you have thousands or hundreds of thousands of those. MyNCP is probably the most sophisticated tool out there for this type of problems where you have time series, multivariate, high cardinality, which are very common problems in your database. And therefore, we're very excited to show you how you can do this. Let's solve this problem. Now, MyNCP allows you to create a model, as we talked about before, in a very similar syntax to that of creating a view, in this case, you want to create a predictor inventory model. You want to train it from the inventory table, and you want to forecast the units in inventory column. Now, you're also telling it that this is a time series problem, so you're ordering it by the column date, and that you're grouping by or partitioning it by the product ID column that you want to take into account for every single prediction, the last 20 rows of that partition and that you want to forecast three rows in advance. Say you want to forecast the inventory for the next three days in this particular case. Once this model is trained, you can actually join that model with another table or the table you trained it from to actually make bulk predictions or time series predictions. Let's see how this looks like. Imagine that you actually want to forecast for the inventory given you know, products where the date uh, was greater than 9, 2021, 20, and the product ID is iPhone. Let's do the left-hand side of the join, which is you know selecting from that table, just the usual things that you do when you select from a table, when you pass the constraints. And what you actually want to do here is you want to forecast past 9, 21, 21. Now, what you do here is you join the model with the query that you just saw, and MySB does magic behind here. So you're telling it to join with inventory model that we just trained and that you want to add a new column, which is the predicted value for inventory. And you get the results like this. This is super interesting because you didn't have to do any of the data preparation for the windowing, the moving window, and as well, having to run the model itself 
all you have to treat is this model as another table that you joined with the table that contains the information for your forecast and you actually get real time forecasting capabilities on the fly with MyZB. So I hope that you can get to try it. And if you want to try it, uh, you can actually go to our GitHub repository, install it via Docker, or you can try it on our cloud, cloud.mysb.com. It's early, but we'd love to hear your feedback and we'll be really excited to know and to hear what you're going to do and what you're building. Lastly, I think that one of the feedback that we've been getting from people is that most machine learning practitioners, they also have machine learning models that they would like to access through the database. That's why for the next version of MyCB, we'll be publishing a capability of creating a model as a table in the database, but actually allowing to, to point MyCB to a URL if your model has been deployed with Racer for MLflow into a single web service. And it, this brings the capabilities of you to bring your own models into the database as well. Anyway, we'll be looking forward to see you in our community. So please join us in github.com slash mindsb, mindsb. And we'll love to hear what you have to say, your ideas. At the end, we're building this for you. And we will love to know what problems you have, that you want to solve in machine learning and that you would like to solve through MyZP. Thank you so much for joining this talk and we'll see you soon. Uh, hi, Costa, uh, and thank you hi. for a great uh, presentation from MyZP. Costa here will be filling in for Jorge that couldn't attend this, this Q&A session. Uh, uh, Costa, would you like to, to present yourself to the audience a bit? Yeah, sure. Uh, my name is Costa. I'm part of MindsDB team, and uh, I'm taking care of community uh, here at MindsDB. Yeah, okay. Uh, Happy to be here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Costa, it was a great talk, um, and uh, it's cool to see actually someone taking the, the lead into innovating on uh, with machine learning and AI for databases. Uh, could, could you please tell me what kind of users uh, uh, MindsDB is aimed at? Uh, what kind of, uh, of users will get the, the biggest benefit from, from, from using your, uh, your project? Sure, thanks. Uh, of course, it's a good question. Uh, actually, uh, we are building MindsDB with a uh, mission to democratize machine learning. And... Um, this means that users uh, who we're targeting uh, are like people who have their predictive needs and uh, who know their data, but probably they don't have enough uh, or, like deep knowledge of machine learning tools out there. And um, of course they have SQL and uh, database where their data is uh, stored. Uh, so actually MindsDB allows people um, to make those like, predictions powered by machine learning uh, for such people without even having to know uh, like all the deep dives of machine learning uh, itself. So, uh, of course, you need to know some basic concepts like uh, what means the model training, yeah? So you yeah. need to kind of feed the, the historical data into the model. But actually, that's all. Uh, you just do everything through SQL. Uh, but from but another hand, uh, we also understand that there are um, people who might want to use this in a kind of enterprise environment, in a production environment where there are some data science teams in place, uh, uh, machine learning engineers, uh, some maybe existing models uh, people might have, and they want to leverage it from database perspective. Uh, today, um, classical machine learning approach is uh, treating models like an application. Uh, so you need to feed the data to this uh, model. So you need to not usually people take some like data from from where they store it uh, to pandas data frames like massage it and then feed it to the model and uh, during the whole life cycle of the model you need to actually <laughs> keep this uh, ETL pipeline uh, also maintained. This is uh, one of the most uh, uh, annoying uh, and difficult machine learning tasks for machine learning engineers. Uh, from another side of things, uh, deploying the model is also uh, requiring a lot of effort. You need to build some kind of integration or API from the model to your application. 
and uh, you also need to maintain it. And this is an extra work for your IT departments to actually keep this uh, working. Yeah. Uh, and Smart City allows but, to do it uh, from uh, just a SQL perspective. All you need to do is just uh, you know query the model. So uh, sorry, uh, make a SQL statement to train and SQL statement to query the model. And if yeah, you... it, it, it it seems to have a pretty low entry barrier, and that that's uh, what I like about it. And and I've seen it in, in Jorge's presentation. But you, uh, also, uh, Jorge also mentioned that it's possible to 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 pick a specific model to customize it. So so that's uh, that's some side of features you build for for uh, bigger companies that have uh, kind of a data science department, right? Exactly. So you can start with MindZB easily even if you don't have data science skills, but actually those who have, they have an option to improve their models. And that's what we are actually building and uh, will, it will come in the next uh, release of MindZB. Yeah, that, that's quite cool. Uh, do you, would you like to share like what kind of uh, machine lear learning uh, libraries, frameworks uh, you use behind the scenes to, to implement uh, MindZB? Sure. Uh, actually, we have a separate uh, repo on GitHub called um, Lightwood, and you can access it at like, GitHub slash MindsDB slash Lightwood, and this is the kind of engine we used behind MindsDB. This engine is built um, mainly on top of PyTorch, and it's uh, like the art uh, library uh, with the Facebook behind it, and also uses some uh, other libraries like uh, LightGBM and, and so on. Uh, and uh, yeah, this is uh, what's, uh, what we have inside. Please welcome to visit this repo and tell us what you think. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, one thing I, uh, I I didn't get from from Jorge's presentation. Uh, so so I, I've seen him exemplify that. Uh, so you build a predictor a predictor uh, model. Uh, that predictor model basically analyzes the data in a table to to actually build uh, the statistical model uh, and then you get the predicted data of course if you query it uh, what happens if you if the data underneath the, the model changes do you have to perform any maintenance to the uh -huh. uh, to the uh, to the model itself do you have to do anything to 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 adjust to the changing data yeah good question uh, actually uh... Uh, sometimes uh, you need to retrain the model uh, exactly uh, because what you have mentioned, the data has changed. And um, like with MindsDB, it's easy. It's just a SQL statement. Uh, however, so you have to rerun re the statement again. Yeah, however, um, people might want to automate this as well. And we're also working on this feature that will come in the, like, one of the closest releases that would allow to automate uh, this model retraining based on certain behavior uh, in the data or like some uh, time uh, related uh, uh, rules, for example, uh, retrain each certain amount of uh, time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what, so, so I, I get this, but so once you build a, a model on a, on, a, on a table data set, uh, so the model is created, uh, can you tune up the model after it was created, uh, or you have to create uh, to recreate the model again and select mm -hmm. different parameters and, and, and things mm -hmm. like that? Okay, so if you really want to get into the, uh, your hands on into the model uh, performance, like tune it, MindsDB uh, uh, allows to do this. Uh, we just uh, announced a new feature called JSON AI uh, just uh, this September. Actually, this is part of our engine called Lightwood, as I mentioned previously. And so what it does is uh, for each model, it generates a JSON type configuration file. So you can actually get into this file and edit it, uh, edit some parameters of your data, features, or uh, encoders, and so, and so on, and actually tune your, your model. So you don't need to you know, create uh, tens, uh, dozens, of dozens of models to, to find the best performing one. So we just create a model, and you can tune it with a uh, kind of declarative machine learning approach using JSON type configuration. Yeah, I see. <clears throat> That's nice. Uh... I also saw Jorge mentioning that uh, the uh, uh, 
for mines to be helpful that uh, maria to be requires a schema obviously for uh, for the data so data is uh, kind of has to follow some some consistency rules some 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 format which i know from my from my own experience the the quality of the data is is, is quite quite important in in uh, easing the the work you have to do uh, but uh, uh, does the MySDB, uh, can, can MySDB perform any, any uh, data anomaly uh, elevation in real time for, for the time series data that, uh, for the time series uh, features that, that Jorge presented? Uh -huh. Yeah, this is a very good point. And we see several, uh, we have several customers who are really in need for this uh, feature and uh, this capability to get the anomaly detection in real time uh, from like, different sensors that might come or in streams or even at the database. But, uh, but this is some, some work to, to be developed? No, 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 it's, it's already in place. So actually uh, for this multivariate time series uh, detection with high, uh, prediction with high cardinality that Jorge explained, mm -hmm. uh, we have we are providing uh, confidence bounds, the confidence levels for upper and lower bounds. And uh, actually, when you make a prediction, uh, predictor understands what are the maximum and minimum possible for this uh, type of data. And it calculates uh, based on the actual data that you have for this timestamp, uh, if it falls within the bounds or falls outside. And this means the anomaly. It's an anomaly flag. So it's really easy to... Uh, do anomaly detection with MindsDB, and especially given this uh, high cardinality multivariate time series data, you can just do it in a one SQL command, and uh, mm -hmm. it's I, it, uh, straightforward. Uh, it, it seems like a complicated problem to know what an anomaly is in the data, because from from MindsDB perspective, you don't actually know what the data is. So it's, it seems like a complicated problem. Uh, does MindDB uh, have any ability currently to let the user specify uh, what an anomaly is for the data? Yeah, well, actually, how it works is that uh, you have a historical table uh, with your data, and you train a predictor for this data based on like certain amount of time looking back and forward, uh, like prediction how how many uh, timestamps you want to make it forward, and then actually you do a left join of this uh, predictive data with your table, and it adds uh, kind of uh, for your historical data, it adds those uh, predictions like if they were done real time. Uh, some time back, you know, and it's uh, based on the historical data. It's uh, make a prediction, and if it falls outside uh, of the bounds, yeah, it flags uh, an anomaly. I, so I, it's uh, how it works. I see. Uh, you can actually watch some demos we have on YouTube uh, and read I'll, our blog. I'll, I'll our try. To, I'll try to, to to research more the the more project. It more. seems pretty cool. Uh, Costa, you've done. Amazing work at, uh, at MindsDB, and I, I really like uh, the end result. Uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, databases they usually have a habit to do this. They they put a lot of obstacles, you know, in 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 your work and building uh, like AI capabilities uh, on top of the of MariaDB. Is there something that uh, MariaDB community or especially the MariaDB Foundation can do? Uh, to help make your life easier, like in terms of features or in, ter in terms of bug fixes? Is there anything we can do to, to, to make you more productive in, in building your project? Well, we really welcome uh, any feedback and we are open source project. We're open to any feedback uh, and uh, our community is available. Uh, like you, you're always available to join our community and uh, like tell us what you think, uh, ask for help or anything like that and uh, just welcome to to the discussion any MariaDB users uh, what you really want us to, to help you join with MindsDB what predictive needs you have and so uh, we'll come back to you just okay. get to our community okay okay thanks uh, thanks a lot and uh, th this was a great chat uh, Nice to meet you. you. It was and my pleasure. Uh, and uh, yeah, thanks for inviting okay. me. Okay. See ya. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.